Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I am, well, yet again, recording from the home office here in Jacksonville, Florida. Friday, I mentioned to pay attention to a talk at DEF CON regarding a vulnerability in the Realtek ECOS Software Development Kit, or SDK. The talk by researchers from Faraday Security did not disappoint. So let me take most of today's podcast explaining what is happening here and what you need to know. Realtek is predominantly known for a variety of different chips that they produce. For example, you may have heard the name for audio cards or network interfaces. In this case, the chip at the center of all of this is the RTL819 series of system on a chip components. There are many different variations of this chip, but they're implementing essentially a complete router with memory, with Wi-Fi, with wired Ethernet connectivity, all in one convenient package. That's sort of the big selling point here. And if you ever wondered why so many home routers and such that you see out there, they all offer very similar feature sets and specs. Well, they all share basically the same system on a chip and uh, these Realtek chips are one of the major suppliers for these type of routers. So Realtek produces this uh, system on a chip, but of course by itself it's not very useful. You also need software to actually control it. And to help with that, Realtek produces a software development kit that implements many of the basic sort of routing networking features that you no on these kind of devices. Of particular interest in this case is an application layer gateway for the voice over IP protocol SIP. Routers often do NAT when they translate internal non-routable IP addresses to external routable IP addresses. Most of the time, all it takes is changing the IP address and the IP header. And then, of course, you need to adjust the IP and possibly UDP and TCP checksums in order uh, to make the packet work after you flip the IP address around. But it's not always that easy. Some application layer protocols, like SIP, embed IP addresses as part of the application layer. So now just changing headers isn't going to cut it. You actually need to dive into the application layer, find IP addresses, and then replace them. This is nothing you typically sort of find just simply in the operating system, like you often find uh, NAT. So you have a specific piece of software, this application layer gateway that will take care of parsing these SIP headers, figuring out if there are any IP address in there, and then flipping them around accordingly. And realize that in this case, the router isn't implementing like a SIP server or anything like this. It's just translating the traffic that's passing from some SIP phone that may be on the network to some kind of you know SIP uh, server that this phone happens to be connected to. So the router is pretty much just transparently forwarding these packets and making the necessary adjustment. But well, uh, parsing SIP is not that terribly straightforward. And as part of the code that parses Parses uh, this traffic when they are looking at the audio header. They essentially just copy part of the header into a buffer and they're not restricting the size. It's one of your very, very, very straightforward string copy style buffer overflows. They're reserving 128 bytes for uh, this data, but they're not checking how much they're actually copying into. So you have basically your textbook prototype of a stack-based buffer overflow. And to make exploitation easier, there isn't any of the sort of very commonly used buffer overflow protection techniques that you usually have in modern operating systems. Well, uh, often with these sort of IoT in these small devices, uh, you don't have uh, these uh, kind of randomization techniques. So exploitation is easy. The only thing that really restricts you is that you're working on a fairly limited system. So you're a little bit restricted by the features and the capabilities of that system on a chip. But then again, a lot of this is up to the creativity of the attacker and I wouldn't ever underestimate that. To trigger the exploit, a single UDP packet is all that is needed. 
any port will work. The port does not have to be open. There has to be nothing listening. Like I said, the device is just forwarding uh, those packets. And there's also no real way to turn off uh, that application layer gateway. So it's just sitting there, it's listening. Anything that looks like SIP, no matter what the port, will be processed by it and will expose the vulnerable code. So how do you protect yourself? Is there a patch available? And yes, there is, and it came out in March. But before you tune out and say, okay, you know, a problem solved. The patch was released by Realtek for its software development kit. But now, of course, all the different vendors that use that software development kit, they will have to redo its firmware and then publish new firmware and users then have to download and apply that firmware. So a lot of vendors haven't done that yet. There are still tons of vulnerable devices out there where either there is no patch available for the specific device or the user hasn't bothered yet with downloading and applying the patch. And of course, I always tell you, hey, don't enable these admin interfaces. Don't expose them uh, to the world. And back in March, when Realtek released that update, actually some of the vulnerabilities being addressed were vulnerabilities in the admin interface. In this particular case, for this vulnerability, disabling or restricting access to the admin interface is not going to do a thing the vulnerability is not in any sort of of the web-based admin interface code. Okay, so patch may be available, apply it. Yes, disable exposed admin interfaces, but it's not going to help against this vulnerability, just other vulnerabilities. Uh, can you block packets? Well, that depends. Again, it can be any UDP port, so you would have to uh, block all unsolicited UDP packets coming in on the outside, the WAN interface. Maybe you have another uh, router switch or something like this upstream from the Realtek device that can do that. But of course, these devices are usually in home networks and you usually don't have that ability. Finally, well, stop trusting your router. If you're using host-based firewalls and VPNs terminating on the host, you may basically just say, hey, I don't care if my router is compromised or not. And uh, I just, just treat it as this black box uh, that uh, could be run by my ISP, like I do my modem or any other part sort of off the internet. Dare to say, um, zero trust kind of, you know, those approaches, of course, may help here. But in short, there is no... Uh, pretty or simple fix out there. Uh, only a bunch of sort of ugly and incomplete workarounds. Definitely look for updates from your router maker. Also, uh, exploits have been released. They're out there. Uh, they're simple Python scripts, really easy uh, to pull off. You could use them to test if a particular device is vulnerable, uh, but you know, make sure that you have a way to reboot the device because some of these exploits will just crash the device. Another exploit also uh, released uh, by Faraday Security uh, enables a Telnet server on the device sort of as a persistent backdoor. Worst case scenario, an attacker could turn this into some kind of one packet UDP worm. If anybody here is old enough to remember like the Vidi worm or SQL Slammer, uh, those worms pretty much saturated the internet in minutes. And this is certainly something within the realm of possibility here with this vulnerability. And of course, you also have the trash bin upgrade option where you throw out the old router and buy a new one. I believe that uh, in the long run, that will be the only solution for a lot of these devices. At this point, be a little bit careful because there is no sort of definite list of vulnerable and non-vulnerable uh, routers. But if your router is, you know, five plus years old, it may still work just fine. But the chances of getting firmware updates may be quite slim for some of these manufacturers. Sadly, there is no you know, list of ingredients print on the router where you could check that it contains this chipset. But even if it contains a chipset, it may not be vulnerable because it may not include that vulnerable software component. That's again a little bit up to the router manufacturer. So quick recommendation at this point. First thing after you finish listening to this podcast, make sure your router firmware is up to date and then uh, try to figure out if you have any vulnerable devices beside your router. 
a real big problem here will be sort of you know, if you're in charge of a larger network, any users working from home, uh, you probably don't even know what kind of routers uh, they are running. And uh, they, of course, may be vulnerable. And again, there is no sort of simple uh, test for it. I hope that, you know, come Monday, some of the vulnerability scanning vendors will come up with uh, some safe tests for this vulnerability. But again, it's not so much an enterprise network issue. It is all the home users, you know, with people working from home. Uh, they are really uh, the biggest uh, target here. So sorry, I know I'm running way over uh, today, but uh, just two quick other news items. Uh, Guy wrote up a phishing email that does a pretty good job impersonating a transcribed voicemail message to get people to reveal their Microsoft 365 credentials. Looks like the particular domain used in this attempt may no longer be responding, but of course, I'm sure there's a new one by now. And Palo Alto published an interesting security bulletin that certain configurations of its URL filter allow attackers to use the firewall as an amplifying reflector in denial of service attacks. This apparently has already been exploited. A patch should be released soon, but in the meantime, they're outlining some of the configuration options that lead to that behavior. And they're saying that's a configuration option you don't really want to have in place anyway. So probably want to fix that as well. That's it for today. Again, sorry for running over quite a bit today and talk to you again uh, tomorrow. Bye.